Yeah, welcome back. This is episode number two of Cap Air. So, um, last episode was the first episode of Cap Air. Uh, I've taken my jet that I've been working on all week, and we flew from uh, Tajin in the Arctic all the way down to O'Neill. We just um, delivered five passengers to um, to O'Neill here. And so our next stop is going to be Creative Island. We need to uh, give five more passengers, but we have people to pick up at this terminal. So let's go ahead and we'll walk over the terminal and we'll take a look. And so we'll take our air stairs in the back. Eventually, I'm going to build some ground support vehicles, like um, a moving air stair for the front door. But um, I really used to love the old air stairs they had um, in the 70s and the 80s. Um, and so I decided I want to have a version with the in the air with uh, aft air stairs. So let's go ahead in here. And you can see I have my ADF navigation system over there. That's part of that's the add-on I've been working on. And I don't think anyone's actually physically in here, but they are in here. So, all right. So we do have uh, some people for here. If we look at the map, we can see right there we have five for Trinite and five for Arcturus. So those are worth picking up. Those are a couple places up here in the Arctic. So eventually we are Arctic based. And so we're going to pick up some people there. So we have um, Trinite and we have Arcturus here. So we can deliver them via helicopter or that. Uh, we'll eventually get in. I'll bring in Katie did and we'll do that. So let's go ahead and let's load the pastures. So sometimes you can see them in the terminal, sometimes you can't. So this airplane is still very much work in progress. I have a couple bugs here and there that need working out, but the uh, best way to, f to uh, figure them out is in a career game here. So, All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to load these pastures up. So I will jump in my seat after I shut my door and lock myself in here. Okay, so let's go ahead and next thing we want to do is question mark P load. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to highlight that and copy it. And I'm going to go Trinite. All right, so five have been boarded. Then the other one is going to be um, Arcturus. All right, good. And so they're now on board. Now, we have to deliver them at some point. We don't have to deliver them the next leg. Uh, currently, we have about 8,000 pounds of fuel per side. We burned about 6,500 pounds. Uh, no, we didn't. We burned 12,000 pounds um, coming down from the Arctic, about 6,500 liters. Currently operating at a loss, but we'll quickly get in the green here in a second. Um, it cost us about $9,700 in fuel to come down from the Arctic um, at the at the middling price of fuel. If we get it at the refinery, we would have made a profit on that. So at some point, we're going to order fuel probably from... Uh, myself in the career build series will actually do a cross series where I pay career build series some money to bring me some fuel and so um, currently what we're gonna do is we're gonna head to creative base um, we are not picking up anybody at creative but we have five people from the Arctic that we're gonna drop off so we spent nine thousand seven hundred fifty dollars to come down here we only made seventy three hundred but we're gonna then gonna fly down here which should cost us not very much money and we're going to dump off five more people, which will get us, you know, even a little bit more money. So let's say another 7,300. This might only cost us 1,000. So we're out about 11,000, and we're going to make about 14,000. And then as we do some other stuff, we'll make more money. So let's go ahead and get ready here. So uh, first thing we'll do is we'll um, pick up our clearance. Uh, since we're very close here, um, I do have... A nav there so we're gonna go ahead we're gonna take off and we'll go to a final approach fix I do not know the runway heading so let me actually do something I can't do that yet um, I have to get a compass uh, we'll do it on takeoff actually I do know the runways so I'm writing down runway numbers as I go so currently we are at um, O'Neill and O'Neill's runways are 13 and the reciprocal of that is uh, 310 so if we're taking off um, this way, that's 310 is the heading. So that's runway 31. If we're going this way, that's 130. That's runway 13. So we know that. So I don't know the runway here yet. So as I learn these runways, I'll be able to cr create some instrument approaches. So we're going to take off uh, runway 13, climb and maintain. We're probably going to go up to only go up to 2,000 feet. Um, and we'll join the final approach fix. Now, if I knew this, I, I would assume this is a 360 heading. So I'm thinking this is runway 18. 
going south. So I'm going to guess this is 1-8. This looks like it's oriented perfectly north. Not 100%, but uh, we will guess. Guess that that's perfectly north. So we'll expect that this is runway 1-8. So what I'll do is I'll put in the radio frequency. And when that hits 1-8, we, we'll turn on the 1-8. We'll come in and we'll land at creative. All right. So there's a physical ADF tower or a physical ADF shack. Just like see that orange shack over there. I put those all around the world. They operate like real navigation systems. So I'll uh, we'll pick up a clearance. Uh, Cap Flight 762, we are ready to pick up our clearance. We have information alpha. Uh, Cap Flight 762, you're clear runway heading up to uh, 1,000 feet. At uh, 1,000 feet, you can turn direct to the final approach fix for the um, runway 18 at creative. All right, uh, we'll head. Uh, expect runway heading up to 1,000 feet. Um, we'll head direct to the uh, uh, final approach fix at 1,000 feet, and we'll expect the runway 18 at creative. Uh, cap flight 762. Yeah, and you can go ahead and contact ground point nine when you're ready. Ground point nine. Thank you. All right. So first thing we'll do is we'll set our flaps. All right, and we're so we're waving to the marshal. We're gonna we're gonna go like this with our hands, telling us that we want. Or we're gonna put up a finger. We're gonna put up finger one. That's for engine one. They're going to take their wand and they're going to spin it to tell us that we're clear to spin one because we can't see behind us. So they have to make sure nobody's going to get sucked into an engine or whatnot. So first thing we'll do, APU is on. That's giving us power. APU bleed gives us air. Fuel valve one. And we're going to hold this. We're going to watch our N2. When the N2 hits 1.4%, we expect a light off. If it doesn't light off, we expect that we... Um, that means that we had a uh, hung start, and we need to dry motor and blow the fuel out of there. All right, so we're going to actually taxi out on one engine. If we're taxiing out on one engine, we need to leave the APU on. Ah, right, Caplight, uh, 762, we're ready to taxi to runway 14. Uh, Caplight, 762, uh, you're cleared to taxi. Uh, go ahead and turn right on Alpha and hold short of 14. All right, cleared to taxi, uh, turn right on Alpha, hold short of 14. Caplight, um, 762. Rear back correct. All right, so we used to always taxi out, or the vast majority of the time, unless, like, so in the Arctic, I started both engines. The reason is we were right there. You notice we have a little bit of a taxi down there. So this is actually how we would do it in the airlines. We would taxi out on one engine, and uh, we would do that to save fuel. So we'd actually taxi out on engine one, which is on the left side. And part of the reason was we had a gust lock, so it was only uh, made so that you could push engine one up high enough to get taxiing. So we taxi out on, on one engine, and that saves us uh, wear and tear on the engines. It also saves us fuel. We don't need both engines to taxi. And uh, we don't get big asymmetrical thrust because see how close the engines are to their center line? So we don't get a lot of asymmetrical thrust in game or in real life. All right, so hydraulics are coming on. I should have done that already. Windshield heat, we usually do that on takeoff, so I'll do that on takeoff. All right, we're good to go here. And so we want the engine to run for a minute before we um, we want the engine to run for a minute before we start. So let's actually do this. Let's uh, start instead of starting via the APU. Let's start via the cross bleed of our engine. So we're actually going to turn the engine cross bleed on, and we're going to start with the air from our other engine instead of the air from the APU. So I'm starting engine two because we need that to be up for a minute. Engine two started, we're gonna shut the bleed off so the air that goes from engine one and two, we can shut the APU off. All right, so that is uh, how you really have to do it. Um, you can either use the APU, you can use another engine, or I don't have it set up in this, I might put it in at some point. Uh, you can use a huffer cart, which is essentially a ground compressor that will blow air into your engine and start it. At cap light 762, hold short of 1-4 and contact round on 20.7. Uh, hold short of 1-4 and we'll contact round 20.7. Cap light 762, switch to radio. Uh, cap light 762, we're, we're ready to take off runway 1-3. Uh, uh, cap light 762, you're clear to take off runway 1-3. Uh, climb runway heading up to 1,000 feet. Upon 1,000 feet, you can turn uh, right to the final approach course for um, runway 1-8. All right, we're clear runway heading up to... Um, 1,000 feet, and we'll turn direct to uh, final approach course at 1,000 feet, cap flight, 762. All right, so my autopilot is set up. We have the altitude, the heading, the modes are selected. All I have to do is press AP, 
and the autopilot's on. Clear for takeoff, uh, takeoff checklist. Flaps are set. Lights are on. Windshield he is on. Before takeoff checklist complete. All right, so before takeoff checklist is complete. And so we do light ourselves up like this even during the day. That's to help other planes coming in to land to make sure they don't hit us. So it's just for collision avoidance during the day. As you can see, the landing lights of an airplane sitting on the runway from a long way away. You can see the beacon from you know miles away. All right, so we have a quite a mountain in front of us. Uh, if need be, um, I will turn. I'm gonna do. I'll do some departure procedures too at some point. It's actually a left turn there. So we're clear for takeoff. Here we go. So I'm staying to the left a little because the devs put the center line lights right in the center. The only place I knew that did that was Miami. Everywhere else puts them off the side so you don't hit them 80 knots. V1, rotate. Positive rate, gear's coming up. Flaps up. Autopilot's coming on. All right, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do GPS, nav, and we'll go take the heading hold off and it's gonna turn us to that waypoint, should. Okay, I, I didn't enter in the new GPS, so that's why I didn't do it. Okay, good. All right, once I get a heading off that, that cap flight 762, you can contact departure on 127.6. 127.6, cap flight 762. Cap flight 762, we are 1,000 feet headed direct to the final approach course. Uh, cap flight 762, um, continue. continuing cap flight 762. My gears have an issue again. That's just an issue with something's up. If Watch, if I get out of my seat, they'll probably fix it. Here, let me try it. Maybe not. Um, I have to fix that. Um, I've been having a ton of problems with that. It's something to do with the lag in the game, so. Okay, it's damage in my nose. Let's go ahead and shut off damage for now until I get that fixed. I just tried to fix that. That's been giving me a lot of problems. It's a game bug, so I'll fix it eventually. All right, uh, let's go ahead and get ready for this approach. So we're currently heading 122, so we want to put a heading in there of 122. Yeah, so I need to fix that. That's an issue. I think I know what's up with it. I had a head gear problems, and um, if I'm sitting in my seat, the gear didn't want to operate fine. If I got out, it would work. So it's just it's a pain. I have to fix it. All right, so next thing we want to do, we want to set this up. So I'm going to look at my ADF here. And so the nav system at um, Creative is 850, so we need to put that in. So there's an actual radio beacon on the ground. This is how we used to navigate. Pretty much everything is um, GPS now. 850, all right. And so we're gonna go to heading hold. We're gonna take off GPS. We're gonna go to radio. And so when this gets to 18, I'm, I'm suspecting that's runway 18. When that gets close to 18, I'm gonna track that in on the 180 heading. All right, so we are currently uh, three, let's see, we're seven miles from the airport. We're currently um, 3.4 nautical miles from the final approach fix there. Uh, I'm sorry, we're 1.5 nautical miles away. So you can even see on the map here. So I'm going to start cutting my turn in a little bit here. So I'm going to go about, oh, I don't know, 140. All right, so that's going to give us a little bit of a right turn here. All right, gear's coming down. We'll see if it comes down. Flaps coming all the way in. Let's slow down to a final approach speed. Okay, gear is down, so I need to fix that nose wheel. I'll do that later. All right, we're looking for this to get to 180. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to turn to 180. We're only four degrees away. Slowing down to my final approach speed of 120. And you see the number's still going up because we're going, we're coming into the course here. So I'm going to actually help it along a little bit. To give us a little bit more turn here. So I can override the autopilot a little bit here. I need to turn to get there. So I'm gonna override the autopilot. I wanna get on 180. I want that course to be 180. There we go. So a little bit short of the course there. All right, so we're about two degrees off, but that's not too bad. All right, we're gonna descend down to 500 feet. Non-precision approach. So we'll go down to 500 feet above field elevation. 
Um, I don't know the field elevation. I should have wrote th written that down. Wrote that down. Should have written that down at O'Neill, but I uh, forgot to. So you're actually doing your approach altitudes based off the field elevation. So uh, precision approach, you want to be 200 feet above field elevation. If the field elevation is 400, that would be 600 feet. Uh, Non-precision is 500 feet. If the field elevation is 400, that would be 900 feet. 120 knots is approach speed. Flaps are full. Um, uh, Cap flight 762, you're cleared the approach runway 18. Cleared the approach runway 18. Cap flight 762. Uh, Cap flight 762, you can go ahead and contact tower on 20.7. Uh, 20.7 20 Cap flight 762. Cap flight 762, we're uh, 500 feet inbound runway 18. Uh, clear to land runway 18. Cap flight 762. Clear to land runway 18. Cap flight 762. Uh, landing checklist. Gears down, flaps down, lights are set. Landing checklist complete. Copy that. All right, so see how I'm off? I need to come left a little bit. So let's go 175. I'm too far to the right. I need to come left. And as you can see, that's correct. I can tell before I even look at it because that number should have been 180. 180 is a direct line from here straight up, pretty much on this grid line. And because my number's showing 177, I know I'm to the left of it. So I, I'm, I'm to the right of it. So I need to come left, which as you see, I turned about five degrees left here and this number will climb up to 180. When it gets close to 180, I'm gonna turn back to 180 and I should be coming right in at the uh, runway. I'll brief the approach, uh, coming in on the runway 18 for uh, creative. Uh, final approach course is 180. We're correcting for that. We're down to 500 feet. Um, if we do not see the airport, we'll go missed and we'll go up to multi-hub. If we do see the airport uh, or runway lights, we'll continue. If we see the, air the uh, runway, we will land. Uh, briefing is complete. All right, so um, see the number went up one, one digit. So my correct, my correction is working. I turned to five degrees, about six degrees on there to the left, and that number is climbing. When that number gets to 180, I'm going to turn right to 180. Now I have some wind in. I think I do have some wind. So we probably need a little bit of a wind correction angle to the left. So let's go a little bit more. One seven. Let's go one seven eight. Uh, no. Sorry, let's go 172. And so I probably need about a three degree wind correction angle. So we're turning a little bit more to the left, that number should rise faster. Once I visually can see the airport, I'm gonna continue visually. So see, it's almost to 180 now. So instead of going 180, I'm gonna go to about 178. As soon as that says 180, I'm going 178. Can almost see the airport. So I don't want to focus too much on inside. So let's actually look outside. We'll cheat a little. You can see it coming in right there. Airport's in sight. Autopilot's coming off. And we'll manually correct. Runway's in sight, landing. And we are clear to land. All right, so that's, so if, say we're socked in weather, you notice the instrument approaches work. Uh, there's an actual physical orange little shack at the end of the runway. That's what I'm actually navigating for, uh, navigating with is that uh, runway is that uh, radio frequency coming off that. It's actually talking to the antenna on my plane, uh, just like it would in real life. Again, you know, mostly what they do now. Let's go ahead and unlock the thrust reversers. That should be on my landing checklist. Landing gear's down, three green. All right, we're on a good approach here. We have a good three degree glide slope. Looks good to me. You can tell just from experience. A little bit slow. Airplane doesn't mind getting a little bit slow, so, you know, it could have an approach speed slower than 120, uh, 115. We used to do 115. So I can feel my wind to the left. You notice I'm correcting. And now I'm going to start bringing the thrust back. We fly a jet all the way to the ground. Start doing a little rudder. Left wing comes down into the wind. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and put the thrust reverses out. And here come my thrust reverses. And I tap the brakes. Thrust reverses are going forwards again. Stow the thrust reverses. Shut, disconnect the thrust reverses. After landing, flow please. After landing checklist. Uh, flaps are up, lights are off. Windshield heat is off. After landing checklist complete. I can't flight 762. You can go ahead and uh, taxi with me to uh, the hangar. Uh, to you at the hangar. Cap flight 762. Thanks.
All right, the marshaller is waving us in. They want us to go over left to parking. So I have a little bit of damage because of that uh, pivot. I have to fix that, but we have to wait till we get all rid of all the pastures before I can really uh, put this airplane away. All right, so they're just going to have a stop here. The marshal is having a stop. I would shut down one engine if we had a long taxi, but we don't. We have a short taxi, so there's no point. All right, so the marshal is having a stop. Generally, they don't want your jets, your turbines, pointed at the building because you'll blow a hole in the building. So as you see, I'm kind of parked with a bunch of space behind me. Go ahead and set the brake and shut down our engines, and APU is coming on. And that's for fuel savings. We shut them right down. So we burned about, um, so let's see, I'll write this down. So from O'Neill, so O'Neill to Creative, we burned about 2,000 pounds. All right, so that's about 1,000 liters. All right, so that is, that's about exactly what I thought. So. Uh, we're we're be, we're be just barely in the red here, on money. So uh, we kind of expect that, you know, uh, as we drop more pasture off, we're going to be uh, doing better. But um, so I need to take a couple data points here. So I need field elevation. Uh, let's see, field elevation is 18 feet. So we have um, creative. Creative's runways are 1836. Uh, field elevation. Field elevation looks like 18 feet. All right. So all this is important. So our our approach altitude would be uh, 518 feet because it's 500 feet for the non-precision approach plus 18 feet. All right. So we have that on. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to drop our people off here for uh, creative. So we do P, unload, creative. And we just made $15,700. So this was our big one. So we're, we are in the black as far as money is concerned. We're making green. So let's let's talk through how this works. So um, we flew down from Tage and O'Neill in episode one. I spent uh, just under $10,000 in fuels, $9,750. $9, we made $7,300. So we are, you know, we were... Um, at a deficit for money there. So, you know, a couple grand in the hole. And then this flight here, it only cost me about um, worst case scenario, or let's say if we're buying from here, that was uh, $4,600. All right, so that would be, let's say $14,000. Um, $14,000 spent, we made 7,300. So we're uh, about 7,000 in the hole. And we just made fifteen thousand, so we are now seven thousand uh, dollars a profit. So we are in the profit here. So we've turned a profit, seven thousand dollars. All right, we're going to go into a little period of no profit here, uh, but we'll make it up later. So I'm planning my routes to be profitable. So we have five to key here. We have to go to Komodo anyway, and I'm actually going to probably do a helicopter. I think. Um, Let's do it anyway. Um, so I need to go to Komodo, which means I needed to go to Draymore or Harrison. Um, let's go. Let's let's leave the people for key. I'm just going to go from Harrison to there. Yeah, I'll go from Harrison to there. Okay. And so we won't bother going to Draymore. We'll go to Harrison. So the people have dropped off. We're not going to bother picking up our people for key here. Next, we need to go to Multi Hub, and that's all about getting fuel. All right, we can. We need to buy jet fuel here for forty-six hundred dollars, and we're also going to pick up these five people for Komodo. So that will give us ten pastures to deliver to Komodo. So we're going to go ahead and pick them up. All right, so that's our next stop. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that this video. So let's go ahead and save this. All right, and we are ready to taxi and take off. And we're going to take off runway one eight because we actually take off with the into the wind. Let's see where the wind is now. Yep, so the wind is coming towards us, it looks like. Uh, wind is, might be, if we look at our little spinner here, actually wind's from behind us. So we landed with a little bit of a tailwind, but very minor, so we'll actually take off runway 18. 
All right, so we'll take off runway 18. And actually, you know what? The wind's calm enough. Let's take off south and land this way. So we'll go down to the south. We'll turn around visually, and we'll come in. So first thing we'll do is we'll pick up our clearance. Uh, Capital 762. We're looking to pick up our clearance to uh, airport. Capital 762. Uh, expect uh, takeoff runway 18. Um, climb maintain runway heading up to 1,000 feet. And we'll give you vectors for um, the runway 36 at airport. All right, uh, we will take runway 18 up, uh, runway heading up to 1,000 feet and vectored for runway 36 at airport. Uh, Rebec, correct, 762. Go ahead and contact me on tower point seven when you're ready to taxi. I'm doing both. All right, copy, will do. All right, so runway heading 180 up to 1,000 feet. All right, we'll preset our um, autopilot. So we have heading hold, altitude hold. Those are in. Those take precedence. Even though these are selected, as long as heading hold's clicked, that overrides these modes. Next thing I want to do is, so I actually have a another ADF at um, what's called the airport. That's ch that's uh, channel 430. So we're going to go ahead over to our radio page, and we'll set that in. And it's 430. All right, so that's in. And we can actually test it on the ground here. 133, 2.5 nautical miles away. We're not far. So let's go ahead, and we're not picking up any pastures here. So we're ready to taxi um, once we start our engines. So let's go ahead and let's go APU uh, bleed on, fuel valve, hold the starter, wait for an N2 of 1.4. We shut our engines down when we offload pastures so we don't hurt them. And we'll start two. N2 of 1.4. I'm sliding forward just slightly. That's why I'm kind of in a rush here. I don't want to fall in the drinky poo. All right, we can shut off the bleed and the APU. Uh, hydraulics are on. Let's go ahead and remove the brake. I'm gonna go uh, all the way left with my nose wheel here. Actually about 45 probably. And I'm only gonna bring up my right turbine. And that's gonna help me turn left here. There we go. That turbine's coming up, that's gonna help me turn. So you actually do this in real life, you'll bring one turbine up. Uh, Capital 8, 762, we're ready to taxi runway, runway 18. Capital 8, 762, uh, clear taxi runway 18. You can, uh, you're cleared on to 18, and you can back taxi and turn around. Uh, back taxi, turn around on 18, we're cleared to enter the runway. Thanks, Capital 8, 762. Set flaps. So I tell the FO to set flaps. Flaps are set. All right, here we go. So I'm going to bring my thrust back. That will sync the two up because I just had the right one up. And here we go. We can taxi now. All right, so fuel management, uh, both monetarily and just for making sure we don't run out of fuel in this plane, is important. I set this up so that we can go to the Arctic and back at realistic airliner speeds. Um, and we actually, you know, we kind of have a distance compression because the, you know, we're talking we're maybe 60 nautical miles from the most southern points to the Arctic, which is painfully short distances for me. But we burn so much fuel in game, unrealistically so, that um, to achieve similar performances, that um, you know it actually kind of gives us that realistic element as well. So we're burning. You know, you figure the Arctic is should be far away. And so we can go to about the Arctic and halfway back in this jet, which is pretty realistic. So we need fuel there. So like I said, the fuel in the Arctic is painfully expensive. So by making sure we fill up 100% before we were to go back to the Arctic, that's going to allow us to, um, that's gonna allow us to, you know, we can get halfway back and buy cheaper. And so we're only uh, using half a tank essentially of uh or quarter tank of the expensive fuel so that's saving us money so we're staying on the left side here because we're gonna have to taxi around and spin us around here i'm gonna get rid of that waypoint all right yeah cap late 762 just let me know when you're uh, ready to go oh uh, we'll do cap late 762 this airport was one of the early ones, my understanding, of the game. That's why it looks so friggin' weird. Why the runway is like it is, and, you know, just kind of uh, 
early days, and I think the, the devs have tried to make things a little bit more realistic. So one thing I like about this runway is it doesn't have the X on it. X on a runway means the runway is closed, so, um, you know, be nice if they figure that out. So see the chevrons, the yellow chevrons? We do not want to taxi on that. Yellow chevrons often mean that um, the run you cannot bring an aircraft on there because you'll actually break through. The runways have very thick um, surfaces. They can hold a lot of weight. You're talking, you know, especially you talk like a fully loaded 747 or A380. They're incredibly heavy. You can talk like a million pounds for some of those. And so you would not, um, you would not be able to, um, so, you know, you have very thin asphalt on some, on the areas the airplanes are not intended to drive on. So sometimes you'll see they're green. That's to tell you that would be like driving on grass. It's too soft for you. Again, these, uh, these centerline lights, these green lights, most airports, they put them offset to one side or the other of the line, I think usually to the right side, so you don't hit your uh, nose wheel on them. So I, if you notice, I kind of hang off the side of the center line when I'm taking off. That's because of those. At Cap Flight 762, we're ready for takeoff. At Cap Flight 762, you are clear for takeoff. Uh, maintain runway heading up to 1,000 feet for vectors. Uh, Cap Flight 762, we're clear for takeoff. Uh, runway heading up to 1,000 feet. Cap Flight read back correct. All right, uh, takeoff checklist, flap set. Lights are on. Windshield heat is on for takeoff checklist complete. All right, here we go. Set thrust. Thrust set. 80 knots. V1. Rotate. Pause rate. Gears coming up. Autopilot's coming on. Flapped up. And yeah, we're not going to bother going fast here. Stay slow. At Cap Flight 762, you can contact departure on 128.6. Uh, 128.6 Cap Flight 762. At Cap Flight 762, uh, we are leveling off at 1,000 feet. At Cap Flight 762, do you have a uh, visual on the uh, airport? Uh, Cap Flight 762, that's a firm. All right, Cap Flight 762, uh, you want to maintain visual or you want uh, vectors? Uh, can we get vectors? It's a little bit uh, snowy out here. All right, Cap Flight 762, uh, go ahead and turn right to heading of 180. Uh, 185, rather. 185, Cap Flight 762. Give myself an extra five degrees right. I'm pretty close here. I need some space to turn around. At right, Cap Flight 762, you can need the approach in there. Yeah, it's uh, snow just kicked in. We're going to need some... Uh, we're going to need the approach. All right, Cap Flight 762, go ahead and turn right to uh, heading at 195. 195, Cap Flight 762. All right, so we're going to follow. We're going to go the final approach course. So this runway also has a very straight uh, north on there. And so we're going to expect, oh, I don't know, probably here. It's going to be our final approach fix. So we're going to come down, we're going to turn around, and we're going to head in. At Cap Flight 762, you can go ahead and turn right to 220. Uh, 220, Cap Flight 762. 220. So I'm too close laterally to the airport. You know, I'm going, still going 200 knots. I need some space to turn around. I'm probably not going to go all the way out here. Let's go right here. All right, so, um, so this is our nav right here. So our nav is set up for that airport. Let's verify it. So it should be... 4.30, it is 4.30. Uh, distance is three miles, so we're gonna go probably out to, I'd say, five miles. We'll go five miles and turn back, and we won't do a full 10 mile approach. So we burned about uh, 800 pounds so far. As you can see, we're running about half tanks at the moment, a little bit less. And we're going to pick some fuel up here. Now, even though, you know, we're probably going to stop for fuel again in another episode before we go back to the Arctic, and that is because the fuel is so expensive in the Arctic that it's worthwhile wasting some money to get fuel here and then go to the Arctic than it is. So probably we'll pick up our last set of passengers for the Arctic, head here again, get fuel, and then go from here to the Arctic. That's going to actually save us a ton of money. 
Uh, Cap Flight 762, you go and ahead and turn to 090. 090, Cap Flight 762. All right, so we expect this course, when this course is lined up to 360, we're gonna follow the 360 course in. So I'm on vectors now. ATC is vectoring me around. We came out of here, I needed space, so he pushed me this way. We're gonna rotate around, we're gonna return to a 090, so we're turning 90 degrees. Before the 90 degrees, it's gonna turn me 45 degrees, and then 45 degrees is more comfortable for me to turn in. Because we have to make a big 180 degree turnaround um, in a jet going 200 knots, you need that space. Uh, set flaps to two. Flap set. So we're under 200 knots. We want to put a couple knot. We want uh, a couple notches of flaps in there. All right, so as you see, we're turning uh, 90 degrees here. And once we roll out on 090, we're gonna go 045. Cap light uh, 762, go ahead, turn left to 045. 045, cap light 762. So he's continuing the turn. Uh, to try to get on course at 90 degrees is tough. 45 degree angle is much easier to stay on course. So that's why he's giving us vectors. Again, we, you know, there's no way we'd be able to see in a small airplane. We could easily just crank it around and go in. Can't do that in a jet. You need space. You're going fast. You need time to set up. You need to be established. There are rules that if you're not established at a thousand feet, you have to go around. And so that's to prevent crashes. It's a very regulated industry to prevent people from getting hurt. So uh, we're going to follow all that. All right, so we're close to a 045. We're looking at this. See, it's 17, it's counting down. So we're only about 10 degrees off. So I'm gonna cut this even more. So, uh, Capital 762, you're cleared for the approach and you can contact uh, Tower on 128.6, 128.6, uh, 128 Capital 762. Uh, Capital 762, we are uh, inbound for runway 36. Uh, Capital 762, you're cleared to land runway uh, 36. Clear to land runway 36, Capital 762. All right, so I, I cut the corner even more, doing about 20 degree intercept. And this number will come in, but it'll come in more slowly. All right, we're clear of the approach. We're gonna go down to 500 feet. I'll actually do 520. I expect the field elevation is probably 20 feet. So 520. 520, 520. All right, so now we're down to 520. See this number still drop at nine. When that hits uh, about a zero, a 360 or a zero, um, you know, go back and forth. Um, that's our inbound course. See, it's dropping again, down to eight. So let's see. So see, we're coming in on an intercept angle. So this is our line right here. From here to here, that's our course line. We're coming in a shallow angle so that we can pick it up and go in. See, it's down to seven. We dropped another degree. There's another degree down to six. I'm gonna go ahead to 10. I'm gonna stay ahead of it. You know, when, you, when you're experienced, you can just kind of curve it in. You don't have to do turn, stop, turn, stop, turn, stop. But again, I'm getting used to this airplane. We are in instrument conditions. We're pretty close. We're only two miles away here. So I have to be careful. I'm gonna slow down to 120. That'll help as well. All right, we'll go to, uh, we'll keep 10. And 10's not a bad correction angle. So that should keep dropping for us. We have a wind, a little bit of wind from over there. So see, we're down to two. I'm gonna go ahead and turn to five. Cut my angle again, there's one. Let's go ahead and turn to three, six, zero. All right, so we're gonna turn to three, six, zero. See, it's a zero, three, six, zero. We're turning to three, six, zero. I'm gonna just give it a boot here to try to help it along so I don't, uh, cut the corner too much. There's the airport. Runway's in sight. Clear to land. We're landing. Autopilot is off. We do have an alarm for the autopilot, but okay. Runway's in sight. Landing. So as you can see, instrument approach in the snowy conditions. That's why I set the system up. So we can do an approach speed of 115. I've been going a little bit faster. 
Part of my uh, landing checklist, landing checklist. Uh, thrust reverses unlocked, gear is down, flaps are set, lights are on, landing checklist complete. Copy. So that's a new part of my landing checklist is the thrust reverser unlock, so that way I can get thrust reverses. The spoilers should automatically come up. I have to look at them. All right, we don't want to fight the urge to go slow. A lot of people have landing problems because they go slow. The jet, you want to go fast. In Stormworks, we stop a lot quicker than we would in real life. Landing gear's down three green. Little wind to my right, I'm correcting. And we fly it all the way to the ground on the jet. We don't do a big flare. Gentle on the brakes, thrust reverser's coming in. Here comes the buckets, buckets are up. All right, brakes, brakes, brakes. We wanna, hit, we wanna keep the brakes on hard as we go straight. Under 20 knots, buckets will come back down. Still brakes, still brakes, still brakes, still brakes. And now we start to turn. 10 knots, we can turn. You want to fight that urge. A lot of people will do that. You'll try to steer. That's how you have crashes, is um, steering too much. See how we have an X on the runway? That is wrong. X on the runway means the runway is closed. At Keflight 762, you can uh, go ahead and contact Ground Point 9. Ground Point 9, Keflight 762. Uh, Keflight 762, we're looking to go to fuel. Uh, Keflight 762, uh, taxi straight ahead there on Alpha. And uh, there'll be somebody to join you and marshal you in at fuel. Thank you, Kefla 762, straight head on Alpha and wait for the marshal. So normally I'd wait for a uh, minute to shut down engine number two, but we'll do it now. Uh, shut down two. So you would do that in real life because um, that's part of the go around. When you do go around, the, it needs to reset all the systems. And so you would want to wait a minute to shut that engine down. You hear that number two just went down. And can you hit the APU for me? So I'm talking to the FO when I'm saying that stuff. I don't need the bleed. Um, and after landing checklist, we need to get a second. Oh, come on. It's hard for me to hit these lights. So in these types of, these are multi-crew air, uh, airplanes. You'd have multiple people. So the FO would do the stuff on their side and the captain would do the stuff on their side. There, there's a division of duties of who's doing what. And so again, main the only reason we're really coming here is to get fuel. And we're gonna pick up five passengers that are going to uh, Komodo because we have to drop some people off for Komodo anyway. And so that will just give us a little extra profit. So I'm just gonna do third person here, get us close to the pumps, and then we'll uh, end this episode up. Hope you guys are enjoying the new series. I'm enjoying uh, getting into some flying stuff again, do some airline RP. I want to add in some things like ground service vehicles, like refueling carts and stuff like that. Um, that will come. But uh, you know, it took me about a week to get this airplane up and running the way I wanted it to. All right, brakes coming on, engine one's coming off, APU's on. Let's go ahead and dump these pastures off. I'm going to save it in case, say, the aircraft slides forward. This will let me do it, so... All right, that's going off. Let's go ahead and we don't have any deliveries for here, but we do want to pick some people up. So let's do that before we forget and regret it. The instrument approaches are working well. Starting to get those figured out. Um, Komodo, it's 410, or Komodo. So let's do uh, question mark, P load, Komodo. All right, so five pastures on board. So let's go ahead and we will fill up. Hello everybody, how are you today? Excuse me, just getting some juicy juice for our airplane. -o. All right, so we're gonna open our ground services panel. And we wanna hook up and grab some Jet A here. And so the fuel pumps into the starboard tank, so we put on the cross feed to port, and that will allow the fuel to push out. This is not working for some reason. So have to keep that in mind. It will pull, pull the airplane. It's annoying, but um, that's just a game thing. You know, the wheels have no grip. I need to grip these wheels. That's on my to-do list, so. Even though, so this won't let me, um, see, I can't. Can't work the hose, so that is not working. So it's pumping out. Uh, we're buying it for $4.67, so it's not cheap, but it's not as expensive as it was.
As long as it doesn't pull me too close to the cliff, I should be able to taxi out. I have this. This wheel will turn 90 degrees, and I can also um, I can also use one turbine to turn me. But uh, so we're gonna fill up here. Um, you notice, so I'm pushing all the fuel from my starboard tank into my port tank, and we're gonna go ahead and fill up here. So in the next episode, uh, we'll join you here. And so we still have some pastures for. Uh, we picked up three locations. O'Neill, Creative, and Komodo. Um, our next flight will probably actually be, I think, did we pick up Trinite? I, we did. We picked up Trinite and Arctic Hub here. So we have them on board for up north again, as you can see. And so we're going to go ahead and we'll probably stop here next. Um, I'll pick up the five for Arctic Hub and the five for Endo. And I don't think we have anybody here. Yep, nobody there. So once we pick up those people, we'll head over to Harrison. And in Harrison, we're just going to dump off... I don't think I want to do this. Let's not do that. Let's go um, from here. We'll go to Multi-Hub. We'll pick up Arctic, and we'll head to the Arctic. Now we're going to be carrying some people uh, around uh, that should be going to Komodo, but... Um, I don't know. Let me think about it. I have to launch a helicopter. I don't own this base. I can't buy the base. I don't have enough money. That's the only issue. So I need to buy a base to get it. Um, could cheat myself in some money, but we'll, we'll just uh, I think the best way to do it. What's this cost? 50000 I don't have that either. I don't know. We'll figure this out. I need to get people to Komodo is, is kind of the short short end of the stick there. Uh, what do I have for people at Komodo, though? I might be able to pick up... No, Spy Cakes. See, if they were going somewhere worthwhile, I would do that. Um, I just don't have a keep active block on this plane. I need to put this plane away. I could transfer people from one plane to the other. I will gift, gift myself some money and buy a base. Um, so that's probably what I'll do. So, uh, hope you guys enjoy this. I will see you in the next one.